Another college basketball video for everybody using Kempom data. First, I want to say thank you to everybody for the last video, the interaction, the comments, the views. Definitely one of my better performing videos and really appreciated the feedback and the excitement around college basketball and specifically the model I built using the Kempom data. I'll have a link in the description if you still want to pick that up. But I want to give you all an option to, to build something, to be able to take these Kempom basketball ratings for free. I've got a model set up that I'll be able to share, link in the description, where you can just plug in some data from the Kim Palm basketball ratings that's not behind the paywall. If you want to be able to create college basketball lines yourself, I'll walk through the logic and give you all that as a one, a thank you, and two, just I think it's a really helpful tool. I did a similar video last year, wanted to refresh it for 2024 information. So with that, let's flip over to what I've got. Here's the, the model we're gonna be walking through. We've got a home court advantage. We've got a Pythagorean coefficient. We've got an average adjusted tempo and average adjusted offense. This is gonna be the average of all teams, 67.5 for tempo, and then average adjusted offensive rating of 106.1. And then we've got the, the Pythagorean co coefficient there of 10.25. And everything I'm using was built off of this article that Kim Palm created several years ago, talking about how he develops his ratings and specifically his predictions. You can see we got the 10.25 coefficient. We're using the log five formula and the Pythagorean calculation to find the expected win percent. There's a lot more of the, the nuance of the, the math and equations behind the scenes. If that interests you, there's links in the, the article and there's also gonna be links here in the model yourself. So. If you really want to dive into the math and the, the logic behind how I built this, it's there for you as resources. But if you want to look at this more from, hey, I want to be able to, to take some ratings, be able to convert it into a money line spread and total value, be able to make bets off of it, well, then this we can make this a little bit simpler for you. So I'm going to actually do just a, a real example here. This is college basketball slate for today. This is 11-12. We're going to just take the, the first game here, Villanova at St. Joe, and we'll flip over here. So you can go to the, the Kim Palm base ratings here. We'll look for Villanova, 48 ranking there. And we're going to grab the offensive and defensive ratings. We got 115 and 100.3, and then that tempo of 67.3. So let's plug those in. Drop down there at Villanova, and then we said 115 flat, 100.3, and then the tempo for Villanova is 67.3. And there versus St. Joe. And then St. Joe, I'm gonna just search what their ratings are. 107.2, we got 102 even, and then their tempo is 72, okay? And then up here, I've got the home court advantage. So this is on St. Joe's home court. So I just put in three as kind of the average home court advantage. You can adjust this. So if it's a neutral site, obviously you'd want to make that zero. And if you want to put a little bit more weight into a home court advantage or not, I've got you some drop downs there to play around with that. But that's, that's all we have to do for inputs. We've got the offensive rating, the defensive rating for both teams. We're going to take a, a home court advantage adjustment to those ratings to get to some new values that are weighted based on the home court advantage. And then we're going to use the Pythagorean expectation formula here, which I've got the, the link down here if you want to read more about it, but basically it's going to take a coefficient and it's going to multiply by a 0.4 and point against assumption. So that's the offensive defensive values there. We got those values for both teams and then we're going to use our log five formula. Again, all the, the math there and the logic behind it if you want, but otherwise you could just take the equations and be able to see 57.75% chance for Villanova, 42.25 for St. Joe, which we can just convert using our probability to American odds formulas to get minus 137 plus 137 break even odds. So this is what you do your line shopping off of to see if you can get any longer odds than minus 137 or plus 137. So longer would be minus 136, minus 135. And then longer on the, the St. Joe as the underdog would be plus 138, plus 140, plus 145, et cetera. 
So there's our their money line section here. And this is a nice summary table I've created. And then we're going to look at converting the, the data and using a tempo to get an expected point output table. So 67.3, so just slightly below the average tempo for Villanova. St. Joe's quite a bit above that average. So we can see that we've got 99.7 or 106.67. That's just a percent of the average tempo. And then we're going to say that, that we'll take each one of those teams and then multiply together times the average to get an expected tempo, 71.79. And then we're going to take that. We're going to take our offense divided by average offense and then do the reverse offense divided by the defense to get an expected output. Multiply that all together there. And then we're going to take that divided by the tempo to get our points. So 77 points for Villanova, St. Joe at 74.82, which equals 2.32 and plus 2.32 is your spread. I went ahead and did some rounding there to make sure those are in half point increments. So minus 2.5 spread for Villanova plus 2.5 for St. Joe, and then our over under at 152 even. So that is everything you need to do. You can see that's not too, not too labor intensive, but obviously there is some manual processes to get that. But again, that's a hundred percent free resource for you. It really is just a big thank you for everybody for commenting and liking. I just ask that if you do download, please consider liking and subscribing. And let's go see if we've got any bets to place using that data. So Villanova, St. Joe, we got minus 134 and plus 122 as our longest odds. Go back here. We can see that that minus 134 would be a positive EV bet on FanDuel for Villanova. And then let's look at the, the point spread. And this is just a good validation too. If you're way off on your projections, then you, there's most likely a, a hole in the logic, but you can see that minus 2.5 spread is really consistent with what we're seeing for Villanova St. Joe. And so you could look at and say, we think St. Joe's only a 2.5 point underdog. We're getting plus three and then plus 3.5. So there's a, a chance those could be EV bets. Again, you'd want to apply some point spread logic to that. Here, flip over to the total values here. You can see we're getting 142.5 or 143.5 as the, the total lines. Go back to the model. You can see 152 is what we actually think the expected point total output is going to be. And we can look at our, our Kempom fan match data as well, just to see if that seems reasonable. 76 plus 72. If we do the math on that, 148, so a little bit less than our 152. But all that is telling us that an over bet right now makes a lot of sense for this Villanova St. Joe's game. So there's, I would say, definitely two EV bets you could place. You could get the, the money line on Villanova that we saw earlier. And look at that. It's actually moved since I flipped to that screen. So that's a, you got to be quick on these EV bets. They, they move. So, you know, that's closing line value right there. If we would have, you would have got it locked in earlier. Now it's moved. And then we go back over here. So the 143.5, I would say you got 142 on bet rivers. So these are all great over bets to place on that game. Back over here at the model. Now I do realize that some of that line shopping can take some time. And if you really want to make this as efficient as possible, I'm going to pull over what Kim Palm's got as a fan match. This is only $30 a year. And you can see he's got every game ranked by the thrill score. There's that 76 versus 72 for Villanova. So that's really consistent with what we showed. We showed 77 over 74 and a half. So that makes you know, doing a bottoms up approach or just taking what Kim Palm has, you can see that the, the values are pretty consistent. 62% for Villanova. <clears throat> we are coming up with 57.75. So a um, little bit of deviation there, but, you know, in the ballpark. And I think that's, I think what he has here is got going to have some more specific home court advantage adjustments with each team. There's um, some luck factors and obviously he's got a more refined model, but if you just want to do a really quick math, you can do that with what I just shared. And then here's the, the model that I've created um, where it's just a copy paste of the, the fan match data. And you're going to be able to see by rank by thrill score, what the, the matchup values are for thrill score. And then 
win percent and then the break even one percent so that minus 132 on FanDuel, you can see it's a really nice EV bet, almost 9%. And then you can flip over and you'll be able to do the spread values and total. So all this is going to come through automatically and you can just do your line shopping off that. So uh, that'll be available for link in the description if you're interested. And uh, one other thing I'll say is I've, based on the the downloads of the Excel versus Google Sheets version of the Kimpal model, definitely loud and clear. Google Sheets is is preferred to Excel, and I, I get that. I'm definitely biased. I I've been using Excel for oh, about two decades now, and that's my that's my go-to. But I, I definitely understand the fact that there's a subscription to have the Microsoft 365 application, and also being able to have the web interface with Google Sheets um, and being free. There's a lot of value to that. So uh, I hear that, and I I get it. So I'm going to start really taking a lot of my models and trying to work them to be Google Sheets friendly. Uh, definitely check out some of my Dradings models for Google Sheets. Those are 100% dynamic now. There is no copy paste needed that they're going to automatically update each day with the latest Dradings prediction scores. And it's going to bring in um, relevant line odds so you can really narrow your focus on your, your line shopping. So I, I Definitely check those out. I'll do some videos of just walking how how simple and easy those are. That's all I have. Again, thank you everybody for watching the last video. I think you know college basketball. I've said it is. There's a ton of games. There's a lot of opportunity, but there's also a lot of risk with college basketball just because there's so much variance in the matchup. So um, I think you need to have a, a systematic way of evaluating each game. Be able to apply some logic make sure that you feel comfortable with what you're betting i would definitely if you're using a kelly criterion application i definitely wouldn't use a half kelly i would use more of a quarter kelly just to haircut your your risk on uh, college basketball just because there's so much variability in the matchups but there's a ton of games a lot of opportunity best of luck thank you for watching and god bless